right, now, uh, first of all, there was October, a very good month. <laughs> and then there was November, a lovely month, my month. December, December, not, I don't like it, the cheap, nasty month, not a great month. And January, God, I thought I'd never get out of that shank and golf. Uh, then there was uh, February, boss. Uh, February, very sad month, uh, the war, not enough photographs and that. Oh, yes, and yes, then there was the month with the Ardesh. Um, uh, Tell her, Mara. It was March. March, March. Scrap, scrap, scrap Saturday. Saturday. Boss. Mara! Yes, yes, boss. Condoms, Mara, for Christ's sake. I thought you told me there'd be no problem, that they'd all back me. Yeah, yes, now, well, like, I, I didn't know how it was going to be. Like, I thought we had emerged into the light, as it were. Oh. The new era, as it were. New oh. light, Mara, is the dazzling smile of the Tony. I know, boss. He is the seventh sacrament. He is extreme unction. Yeah, well, Of yes. course he'd object to condoms, Mara. Uh, and Hannafin. Hannafin, ah, yes. Uh, any, anyhow, boss, uh, you look very lonely, yeah? Uh, what are you doing here, alone, anyway, on the feast of our national saint? How little you know of me, PJ. Don't you realize I'm always alone? You see only the statesman, the tough campaigner, the crusading leader, oh, yes. benefactor of his people. Absolutely. The man who stops every book. Every book. You miss the real story, the heart of my mystery, the, the, the enigma behind the mask. Hi, hi, boss, is that a tear? Oh, Hathalie Nihonahan, weep for me no more. Don't you know that when memories fill the corners of my mind, it isn't only the few brief, thankless years of toil which I've endured that form the tapestry of my past, but the whole history of Ireland. You know. In a sense, I am Ireland, Mara. It's, it's, it's Misha era. Oh, but of course, boss. You're just a new breed of media toady. That's me. <laughs> spear carrier without a cause. You know nothing of such things. That's why you don't understand, you can't understand why I sit here alone on St. Patrick's Day and weep tears for my nation. Ah, I, I suppose you're sad at the state of it. <laughs> of course not, how dare you! What do you mean, the state of it? Thanks to my leadership, this nation thrives. No, rather do I weep to think of how thankless my people are, how, how a nation forgets its heroes. Oh, yes. I wonder today, Marla, why my ancestral hoys toiled and moiled. For what? All for Hecuba. Who could ever forget, uh, on a day like today, the historic meeting between Nave Porrick himself and my ancestor, the great druid leader, Muel Shocklin Hohi, on the Hill of Tara. A meeting that changed the course of Irish history. Now listen to me, ye pagans. God has spoken directly to me and wants me to come over here and save ye, even the women, though if you ask me, they're a bit of a lost cause. But if you listen and do what you're told and don't ask questions, then there's some chance you'll be saved now. Uh, uh, excuse me a moment, now, Porrick. No interruptions, please, while I'm talking. Uh, my name is Will Shocklin. Hi, uh, I'm the spokesman uh, for the tribe here. I don't care who you are. I'm a saint and I have the floor. Uh, and if I could just ask you to step down here for a moment. I'm not stepping down, I can tell you. There's no question of me moving anywhere I don't want to go. Let me make that clear, Mr. Mail Shocklin. Hi. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Nave Porrick, we can discuss the matter so that the interests and the integrity of all sides are fully maintained and indeed a satisfactory accommodation between the parties may be reached. Fair enough so. What do you want to talk to me about? Uh, it's uh, this Christianity idea. I'm by no means against it. Indeed, it might be a very useful thing for me uh, and my tribe, of course. Uh, could you outline some of the main features? Well, it is very simple, really. You can't kill, you can't lie, you can't adore false gods, you can't commit adultery. Uh, uh, of course, that one does seem a bit harsh, don't you think? After all, we must look at the human side of it. Uh, um, a little adultery is, uh, after all, uh, just an understandable indiscretion. That's only part of it, let me tell you. There's no sex before marriage, there's no divorce, there's no artificial means of contraception, there's no... Uh, well, this uh, Christianity is becoming a bit of a dismal science, don't you think, naive Porrick? Uh, I'm not sure I could sell this package uh, uh, to my tribe. No one is allowed to question the authority of those in power. Uh, oh, really? Well, of course, that now is a very uh, interesting concept. They must reveal their most grievous sins to them and then beg their forgiveness and accept whatever penance is handed out without question or murmur. 
Uh, well, you know, I think you've got some excellent ideas there, Nave Porrick. Uh, if we could work on them just a little, I'm willing to help you in whatever way I can with this uh, uh, Christianity business. Tell me again the bit about confessing their sins to me and accepting whatever I tell them. Uh, if I happened, of course, to be one of the chosen leaders. Your ancestor, Mel Shocklon, really was friends with St. Patrick. Oh, yes, indeed. He, he never became a saint himself, of course. The usual backbiting and begrudgery and vilification sort of that. Of but his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren carried the flag of Christianity throughout Europe. Oh, yes. It's not widely known, perhaps, that many of my ancestors were, in fact, saints. Uh, really, was Saint Malachi Hohi converted the Laps. Uh, he loved Laps all his life and... Uh, Indeed, died with his head uh, buried in one. But of course, it was all hushed up at the time. Uh, Saint Gubnet Hahi, from the other side of the family, walked barefoot to Rome to see the Pope, uh, who ticked him off for his malodorous feet. While Saint Boniface Hahi founded a monastic order in Switzerland, which sadly was burnt down by an angry mob after some minor incident involving planning permission. And of course, uh, Saint Lawrence O'Hahi was the chief illustrator of the Book of Kells. Uh, particularly well known for his uh, amusing drawings in the margins, sadly removed at a later date by a jealous bishop. Oh, jealous. The island of saints and scholars was led by Hohies. We were the toast of Europe. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, but what happened to your ancestors after the Brits arrived, boss? Oh, little you know, Mara, the Brits indeed. Must you carry around with you that tired old currency of hate and inferiority? Sorry, boss. It wasn't the Brits, as you put it, who came. It was the Normans, a, a noble people, a cultured people, a wily and intelligent people. I myself, of course, am Norman to the core. Of uh, course. One of my greatest ancestors was Henry de Courcy Fitzhoy, uh, who was Strongbow's right-hand man on that faithful day in 1169 when they landed in Wexford to meet Dermot and Mac Bushan, how are you, Mr. Norman Strongbow? And welcome you are. Welcome as the flowers of May. Welcome ashore, you and your friends and the lot of ye. You're more than welcome. My land is your land, I want you to know that. And enjoy yourselves while you're here. Are you planning to stay for long? Oh, six, maybe seven hundred years. Next. Well, sure, whatever it is, we're delighted to have you. Sure, won't you bring great business and employment prospects with you? And you're all looking great with your armour and your weapons and all the latest gear. Well, I've never seen the like of it. Well, we are the most powerful nation on earth, Mr. McMurra. And we're here to civilise you, I guess. Next. Of course you are. And why wouldn't you? No. Oh. Have you got your daughter there? Of course, of course. It's arranged. It's arranged. Come out here and even meet the gentleman. Hey, hey baby! Hey, hey. Over here, honey! Hello, my beautiful Norman boy. What would a strong, handsome knight like yourself be wanting with a poor, harmless Irish Colleen? Mr. Strongbow will be your husband, love. By the way, Mr. Norman, sir, I have a second daughter of marriage will age. A great girl altogether. Would you have a right-hand man in need of a wife at all? Why, certainly. Fitzhawhey, come here. Uh, at your service, as always. You want King Dermot's daughter for your wife? Well, of course, uh, whenever and however I can serve the party uh, and the people, I'm more than happy to do so. Uh, and if I am to marry for the good of the nation as a whole, then I will not hesitate. I, I, I'll not shirk my responsibility, never caring for personal gain. And Cut the any crap, Fitzhawhey. Done. Wheel her out, Dermot. Barony love, come out here and meet your new husband. How are you, lads? Well, who's the lucky fella? Come on, now. The cat got your tongues or what? Which ye scrawnies am I getting hitched to? <coughs> uh, I have the honour of being chosen to uh, occupy this unique position in Irish life, uh, so it seems. Give us a look at you. Yeah, you're all right, I suppose. A bit in small, but you'll do better than the last ones they got for me anyway. They were cat altogether. Oh, I wouldn't mind this lanky fella here, though. Who are you? I am Strongbow. Oh, I might have guessed. You're Neves, aren't you? Bitch. Daddy's pet. Anyway, come here to me here, you fits high now. Don't mind the bile on me neck. It'll go down eventually. What I want to do now is fill you in on the do's and don'ts round here. First off, I want no messing with the servants from you. Do you hear me now? One hint of that and you're dead meat boy, all right? 
they, 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 they were exciting times in all Boston, now, weren't they? And the cuteness of him, the cuteness of him, marrying the king's daughter to get in on the act, huh? Yes, of course. In, in those days, marrying into the right family was an important feature of getting ahead. Oh, yeah. Not like today, where talent and intelligence and courage are more the qualities required. But, boss, didn't you marry into Will the... Will you stop interrupting Mara with your trivia? Leaving aside uh, Fitzhaughty, there are other great ancestors to speak of. Of course, yes. Those who died in the cause of freedom uh, uh, when the oppressor took hold and threatened to squeeze the very lifeblood of the nation. Who could forget the generous aid from Spain to Kinsale in 1603 and one of that fleet's great commanders, Don Juan Pablo Haughey? Kathleen Nihulahan, tis a great day for Irish freedom, isn't it? Nihon, is a no! What has befallen my poor land? And now God's holy ships from Spain tossed by a raging storm. Yes, but you must be very proud uh, that you are that is here on Cox Isle that the first brave rebels will step ashore. Lost, lost, Akushla, all is lost. The snow has fallen, spies in the camp and Spanish aid destroyed, surely. But of course the great Republican tradition here in Cox will continue. Or Don Labu will cry and rise up again. You must swell with pride at the sound of our great songs of freedom. Oh, shut up, you old fool. Can't you see I've great tracts of land here to give to the Spaniards? Zahone, Zahone, oh. Grand building land for haciendas and timeshare villas. Wait, what's that? Tis a man swimming against all odds, one brave, freedom-loving soul battling with the elements to win Ireland for God and glory. Hello, hello, over here, this way. Ah, 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 senorita. I have travelled far. Have you come to save our land? Uh, see, si, that is the very thing I wish to talk to you about. Uh, Juan Pablo Hoy is my name, by the way. Uh, are you proud of the sacred and abiding links, Sinner Hoy, between Ireland and Spain? Our mother tongues are so alike, aren't they? Spanish and Gaelic. And of course, our great devotion to the Blessed Virgin is matched by your own love of the Madonna. And. Ah! Now, as we were saying, uh, my dark Rosaline, my little paella, uh... <laughs> but, uh, didn't we lose that battle too, boss? Of course we did, Mara. Do you think I don't know my history? Well, there was a lot of talk at that time of turncoats who, uh, who sold out to the Brits in return for the war. What uh, exactly are you suggesting, PJ? A haughty betray a friend, an ally? Never. That's unthinkable. That's anathema. It's not in our nature, Mara. What can you be thinking of? Sorry, sorry, boss. Sorry. It's just, I've been reading old Brian's book this week, you know, and, and he says... Himself, betrayal? You want to talk about betrayal? Well, let me tell you about uh, Henry Joy McHoy from the northern side of the family and the way he was treated in 1798 just for organising arms, uh, humanitarian aid for our gallant sons of freedom up there. Oh, don't let them take him. Don't let them take my wee boy. Silence in court, Oh, please. your worship, he's just a wee scamp of a lot, a wee terror. But sure, there's no harm in him at all. Will someone keep that woman quiet? Love is what made him do these things. Love for his country and love for his mama. Henry Joy McCoy, he was then convicted of the most heinous crime, the provision of guns, I mean humanitarian aid, to the rebel forces here in the north of the kingdom. Uh, Oh, your worship, he's a credit to us all. Have you anything to say? Uh, yes. It never happened. What? I deny it. What do you deny? Um, <clears throat> everything. But you have already stated you knew about the guns. I mean, the humanitarian aid. I did. Well? Uh, but there was none. No what? Uh, humanitarian aid. Oh, do you hear that? The poor wee boy is innocent. Uh, just, just a moment, He's now, a victim of British injustice, a martyr for Irish freedom. And what about his poor suffering mother? Uh, everyone else says you knew all about the uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, I deny it. It's a campaign of vilification and God save Ireland. All three cheers for my son. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brought down, PJ. Laid low by spies in the camp, betrayed and vilified, 
my illustrious ancestor went to the gallows. Ah, sure, leave it to the Brits, boss. They were always no. at the back of our troubles from day no, one. No, no, it wasn't the Brits, PJ. It was worse. Oh. He was stabbed in the back by his own. Led into a trap, they all scarpered and watched as it closed behind him. They were all in it, PJ. Every man, Jack of them, especially Jack. Ah, boss, boss, calm down. No, man. you don't understand. That, that, that's all hundreds my of people, years ago. My ancestors. 1970, to be precise, PJ. Now, when the famine came, the Haughty clan, hounded and harried by its enemies, turned to America and the coffin ships. <laughs> Today I want to tell you all about the famine. Fado, Fado and Aaron, there was no food. Ni rao aim be aum. And all the poor Irish people had to go to America in big ships called coffin ships. These ships were very dangerous and all sorts of strange people travelled on them. Indeed. Well, now, that's quite a smell, isn't it? Yeah, you can't beat the old dysentery, I always say. <laughs> Not to mention the typhus. I'll just step over you there, if you don't mind. Now, hi, I'm Murphy. You can call me Mike. I'm going to America to seek my fortune as a famous personality, and I'll have a go at anything, really. Oh, Lord, there's another body. It's gas, isn't it? Yeah, they're dropping like flies around me. Anyway, I thought I might be a sports reporter or a journalist or a comic performer, something in the arts, perhaps, a, a doyen. I haven't a clue, really, but I believe the pay is good. Now, America is the land of opportunity, so why not? <laughs> now, you'd be a what? This is, you're a, you're a what? A starving peasant farmer, aren't you? It's extreme. Gas, really, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, the, as well as smooth-talking con men, also on the ship, there were always people with too much drink taken, a trudge, starting a fight over nothing. Famine. I'll tell you, this is not a real fight. See, the public, Joe Soap doesn't understand this. Believe me, this is this is a sham famine. No, seriously, wait a minute. This, this is an excuse to escape our responsibilities. Okay, so there is some starvation. I'll grant you that. And people are dying, but there, but there is no food. And I'm not denying that these things are so bold. But that does not make a famine. A real famine is a spiritual thing. It comes from a real hunger, a true longing, a desire that is never satisfied. I waited eight years at Millwall to score a goal. Now, that's a famine. Last and alone on this coffin ship, as it was called, was a poor little man, Cahul Daulo Hokig. Betrayed by his friends and his birthright taken away from him, he was now in the wilderness, wandering alone amongst Strancheri, shaking hands with these simple folk, making them his friends. Uh, hello, how are you? Hello there, that's a, a great, yeah. That's not your youngest friend, very nice, yeah. Uh, and this is your mother here, is she okay? Yeah. Oh, I knew you and all belong to you, your sea breed generation. Indeed. Good to see you there. How are you? Uh, in the Boston, there. he visited all these people over and over. A rish, agus a rish. Always he shook their hand and spoke to them about the old country and how he wanted to go back there. And if he ever did, that he would get them all jobs in Erin. And all the simple people loved Cahal Daulo Hukig and clapped when he spoke and gave him presents of lovely little pieces of chicken in a basket. And Cahal Daulo Hukig knew that the famine wouldn't last forever. And with all the simple people helping him, he would soon be back in his rightful place on Och Cat. And sure enough, so he was. So, uh, did the family come swanning back from America loaded with dollars? Indeed not, PJ. It was the call of duty that brought us back. Our country needed us and the hotties were not found wanting. Oh, oh, I see. This wouldn't have been 1916 by any chance, boss. Exactly so, PJ. You're getting the hang of this history thing at last. My great ancestor, Joseph Mary Hawhey, was smuggled back to Ireland, Tom Clark's suitcase, uh, while Pierce was still hiding in the closet. And in fact, it was with Pierce that he became one of the top secret backroom team that planned the strategy for Irie Amok on Kors. You don't say. I uh, suppose I have to ask. You do. Where was he in 1916? Well, it's uh, funny that you should ask me that. My uh, great ancestor's role in 1916 is not widely known. He was at Boland's Mills in the thick of the fighting and indeed uh, stopped a bullet destined for the heart of Eamon de Valera. For Thank this, Lord. Lord, give thanks. Yes, thanks. I well remember sitting on my ancestor's knee as a child as he related to me the exact words of Pierce and the GPO. Now, funnily enough, uh, Pierce used to sit Joseph Mary on his knee in turn when he spoke to him too, uh, even though he was uh, <clears throat> 17 at the time. 
But it was in those dark days in the GPO that the natural leadership qualities of the Hoggies came to the fore. See you, Joseph Mary Hoggy, you're a damn vampire, you are. What about yon Paddy Pierce? Ah, oh, big Jesse. I come down here looking for a stamp, eh? On a bloody Easter Sunday morning. Next thing you know, shoot your gunnies. You're not done. Reading yon proclamation and that. Uh, in the name of uh, the generations living and dead, would you ever shut up? I'm trying to achieve heroic martyrdom here. Blood sacrifice and so on. And all I hear from you is whining and moaning. I'm trying to give my life for my country to break her shackles so that Ireland, long a province, be a, a nation once again. Easy for you to say. I don't even want to die. I got a career in comedy ahead of me. Uh, well, of course, it's not widely known that that is what we're all involved in here. Well, it's a farce at any rate. Everyone here is starting out on a career in comedy. This young country is about to embark on a career in comedy. We're going to call it a republic, a sovereign republic, and immediately hand over the reins of power to a chap in Rome. Then we'll celebrate equality, fraternity and liberty uh, by exporting all the unemployed, censoring books, and handing power from one gobshite to the next as long as they're related. But first there'll be a treaty in which your man down in Boland's Mills will act the cute whore, and then we'll have a civil war. <clears throat> you don't think Dev wants to share power with Collins, do you? Collins, the great leader. Oh, hey, the big yen, Collins! Have you seen the big fella at the sim now? Mr. Collins, uh, General Collins. What's the news from Dublin, Mick? Uh, Michael, uh, the, the, the name is Michael Collins. Uh, well, of course, I've been to Dublin Castle to, to have talks with the, the, the Viceroy and the Governor and what have you. And, uh, of course, we're talking about more talks. I mean, I personally don't want to have to go back to Downing Street and renegotiate with Lloyd George and all that standing around the doorsteps of Number 10 while all the gentlemen of the world's press take their confounded photographs, all those magnesium flashes popping off everywhere. Very arduous to be there talking and negotiating with the eyes of the world on you. Oh, Arthur Griffith and all that jostling while you're, while you're trying to ensure the birth of a nation. It's a terrible pity that Eamon couldn't make it for the treaty talks, but uh, you now he won't feature in any of the newspaper photographs in the New York Times or the Times of London, etc. Tell us about, tell us about Bloody Sunday, Mick. Uh, Michael, Michael. Uh, well, of course, uh, Bloody Sunday was a covert operation, very clever, of course. Uh, can't say who did it. Uh, that's the worst thing about espionage. One can't claim credit for it, but it was a, a piece of military genius. No, no, no question about that, but has to have been a clever person who, who got that information from the castle and, and shot the spies, but of course he, he can't be named and he, he'd find his name and even his photograph all over the world's press and I don't want my name bandied about in that fashion. Colonel Collins, Colonel Collins. Uh, General, uh, it, 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 General Collins. General Collins, better get your head down in the turret. There have been reports of Republicans in this area. No, not at all. I know this place like my, my, like my own photograph. A uh, hand, uh, this is Bell Nabla, this is my own country. Get your head down, Mick, uh, Michael, there's guns. Yes, flash guns. I think you'll find that those are photographers. Head down, they're snipers. No, no, they're, they're photographers. I think. I, uh, hello, I, I have to say, dealing with the press is part of the job of founding a nation. And uh, uh, uh... yes, yes, a great tragedy, boss. That Irishmen should kill each other when they should have united to fight the Brits. Britannia's horns. What makes them the way they are, boss? Will we ever understand them? I don't know, Mara, you mightn't, but I would. I know how to deal with them. How could you, boss? We are gales and they are gowls. They're a different race. Well, of course, they are, but it's not widely known that many of my people were, in fact, uh, from no, England. No, no, boss, that chase is personal. Uh, Peregrine Hoggy fought at Waterloo beside Wellington, oh, no. while young Winston Hoggy went to Harrow, uh, where he was head fag. An experience which uh, stood him in good stead when he confronted the local chiefs out in the Punjab uh, who uh, uh, went for him up the Khyber. Uh, T.E. Hoy reported to Alan B. Uh, in the First War, while Rupert Hoy wrote poems from the trenches, including his poignant line, Just remember this, there is a part of some foreign field that is forever zoned as Greenbelt unless you can get to the planning officer. Uh, Bomber Hawhey reduced Dresden to rubble in 1944, and Vera Hawhey uh, sang for the troops and was the sweetheart of the forces. Uh, now, I wouldn't want any of this getting back to those gobshites in my party, Mara. Oh, no, 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 no way, boss. That's it, PJ, the, the final irony. My people built this country, and many's another country as well. I feel tired with my labours. 
Now, the end is near, PJ. Oh, Jerry, don't set up, boss. It's true. I face the final curtain. Don't make me record My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. Well, we've always been friends. I've lived a life that's full. Yeah. I've traveled each and every byway. And every common chicken dinner. More, much more than this, PJ. I did it my way. That you did, boss. Regrets? Yes, it's true. I have actually had a few. Oh, forget them, boss. Forget them. Then again, too few to mention. You did what you had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned uh, each chartered course. That you did. Each careful step uh, along the byway. But more, much more than this, we did it my way. Well, my way, PJ. Oh, sorry. Yes, your way, boss. Yes, there were times, and I'm sure you knew. Well, I guess, I guess. And I bit off more than I could chew. Never. But through it all, when there was doubt, you ate me up and spit me out. I faced it all, and I stood tall. Oh, you're tall. but tall enough, anyway. And did it my way. Your way, boss, your way. I've loved. Have you have what? I've laughed and cried. That you have. I've had my fill. Mm. My, my share of losing. Oh, crack it up, boss. And it's tears subside. Oh. I find it all so amusing. Stop, Glory, man. Oh. To think that I did all this. It's not, not widely known. And may I say, not in a shy way. Oh, oh no. No, not me, Mara. I did it my way. Oh. For what is a man? What has he got? Well, if not himself, I can tell you certainly that he has not. To say all things he truly feels are not the words of one who kneels. Stand up, Mara. Oh, sorry, boss. The record shows I took the blows. But did it your way? My way, Mara. Oh, fair play, boss. You did it your way. Of course, it's not widely known. I did it my way, unlike those gobshites. Well, if the Flynn's and the Mara's. Your way. Who else is going to take over for me now? No one, boss. Of course not. They're all... What are they? They're gobshites. The final Scrap Saturday was brought to you by Dermot Morgan, Pauline MacLean and Stanley Townsend. It was written by Dermot Morgan and Jared Stembridge. Sound was by Paddy McBreen and Peter O'Connor and direction was by John Penrose. Scrap Saturday from Q Productions for RTE.